What's up, Wizards? Dev back again from SBMTG with my buddy. Tony. That's his name. And we're going to do a set review again today. We got a couple of more of these to do. This is blue today, a color that we're usually very excited for. And this is no different today. Oh, yeah. Not really. There's some good stuff in here. So, yeah, we can probably go ahead and kick this right on off with Ancient Carp. Ancient Magic Carp. This is magic carp. Yeah, I can't wait to get this in foil. So I got a shiny magic carp. That's <laughs> pretty cool. This is also one of my picks for like. This is up there with some of my favorite artwork in the set. I really, I really like this. It's just so cool. If there is a missing link between magic carp and Gyarados, then yeah, this guy is it right here. All day. I don't think we could actually say much about him as a card though. Mm. He's five mana two five. You'll get him in sealed is probably one or two of at least. If he's a mana more than a pillar field box and he yeah. gets one more toughness, you know. So you can make an argument this is fine, but I don't think so. Not not really. Not in this limited. Mm -mm. So we can move on. Tony's excited for this one. Uh, I love this card. You guys have seen me talk about it already if you've watched my Mono Blue Devotion deck tech for Link in the description. Yeah. Uh anticipate. I feel like this is Disclaimer. Di disclaimer, you guys can completely bash me in the comments for this, but I've playtested with it and everything else. <laughs> they will, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, to you're totally going to hate me. <laughs> this is better than Dig Through Time because it's going to be relevant on turn two and turn six. Yeah, true. Uh, any turn. Like, this is always going to be relevant. Look at the top three cards. It's going to be two mana, instant speed, cycle for whatever uh, answer you want. Look at the top three cards and just take one and put the rest back on the bottom of your library. Yep. Not only that, this helps fuel dig through time. Like that it's only one blue mana and one, so it's splashable by everything. Very splashable. Instead of the double blue mana yep. intensive I mean, dig through time. It's strictly worse than impulse, obviously. It's just one card less than impulse. But in this standard environment, uh, that's that is still quite good. Mm -hmm. Still very good. Now when dig rotates, obviously this will see all of the play, but you could, and Tony is, making the argument that this may see play before Dig rotates. You know, it's it's, and I'm right there with him. I don't know, I don't know if I can co-sign on better than Dig, but I, it is. This is a very, very good card. I think we can all agree that this is quite a good card. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, cards like this are always desirable, always played. So this, at some point in its magic lifetime, will see some amount of play. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and you play it in sealed. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's not. It's not technically advantage, but you know, card draw. It's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a cycle, not an exactly. no advantage. Next up, let's talk about Bell Toll Dragon for like five seconds. None of us, neither one of us, like this cycle of six mana, you know, Mega Morph Dragons. Um, this one is maybe the best one. You can make an argument for that because Hexproof is such a good ability. Yeah. Um, aside from that, though, I don't like any of these guys. Um, this one a little bit more, but that doesn't. That's not saying much. Yeah. So. Protection, evasion, three three six mana. You'll play it in. Uh, pre-release and certain like limited seal type environments yeah um, and it'll be fine you'll love it but I think you probably do play it in seal yeah you know? probably yeah flying and evasion and 3-3 three, three is still relevant enough at 6 mana yep. evasion hex proof that's that's good it's pretty good mm -hmm. so just wonder if it gets outclassed by other dragons you know Especially in oh, that yeah. slot, the oh, six slot. Oh yeah, so. oh yeah, plenty. Like it can still completely get outclassed. Yeah. So we can move on, I think, to okay. a really weird card. This one's yours. Uh, blessed reincarnation and four mana instant, and there is so much text on this. Yeah. Exile target creature and opponent controls. This is like polymorph, by the way. Yeah. Player reveals cards from the top of their library until a creature card is revealed. That player puts the card onto the battlefield, shuffle the rest. Now the difference is this one rebounds. Yeah. It's only a mana more, and by the way, this is instant speed. A lot of these rebound cards aren't, but um, yeah, so I don't think that it has any applications right this second. Uh, it's just so weird. Uh, the fact that it says target creature and opponent controls, I don't think it has any actual use ever. Yeah. Uh, this gives I mean, you take out a huge guy. Yeah, this might know? take out their huge guy, but they're instantly going to be able to get another guy. I like wish it was like a double reality shift where they just, you know, each time they uh, they exile a guy, they manifest, you know, they yeah. manifest a guy. That'd be good. But this, you know, it's entirely possible too that with this you, you remove a big creature and get something that's junk. And that, that'd be good. Yeah. But I just think there's 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 a lot with this card. It, it, again, it's cool that it's instant speed. That is that is a redeeming factor. But I don't think it's enough of one. Now, it does, re technically, this removes two creatures. 
for the price of one card. Yeah. So you have to think about it. It's not terrible, but this can go wrong in so many ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially in standard, where siege rhinos <coughs> run rampant. Yeah, that'd be hilarious when you target siege rhinos and they just get, get siege, siege rhinos rhino yeah. and get another enter the battlefield trigger. Yeah. And mm -hmm. well, I don't know about it. It is weird, but it's also got some things going for it. I don't think it's crazy though. We can move on. Moving on, we've got Clone Legion. I hate this card. <laughs> uh, at nine mana, I really think this needs to be instant speed. Yeah, really? Come on, guys. At least it's, make it a combat trick. Like, especially since it's a mythic rare. <laughs> right. Mythic rare, nine mana, you can't make this an instant. Now, this... I get that this is put uh, uh, for each creature target player controls, put a token onto the battlefield, but that's uh, that's a copy of that creature. I get that that's really stupid and power and a very powerful effect potentially. Yeah. You didn't have to price it out that much. Yeah. Uh, nine mana, come on with it. Not not at sorcery speed. At sorcery speed <coughs> I totally could have made this seven. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. It should be it should be seven. Even that would be outrageous, you know. I'm just I'm not a huge I'm not a huge fan. I don't see anything. This is my pick mm -hmm. for bulkiest mythic of the set. This is my pick for most likely to be a fifty cents mythic. Yeah. 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 Um, I can completely agree with that. Uh, Which means we're probably done with Clone Legion. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Like I said in the spoiler video, there might be some stupid modern thing. And if you know the stupid modern thing with this card, just put it in the comments. Be like, oh, all you gotta do is boom, 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 and you win the game. So let us know if you know, but I'm not seeing it. So moving on is uh, your card. Contradict. Counter target spell, troll guard. Five mana, instant speed. Seems um, okay. Yeah. Maybe. I wish they would have given us back Rewind. I know, I want Rewind back so much. Yeah. Give us give us Rewind back. It's so good. Wizards, we run so good. Well, we just had it, so... Yeah, no. What, we, what this is, is a strictly worse Dismiss from Tempest Block. Oh. Tempest Block's the exact same card, but it costs one colorless mana less. Mm. Um, Dismiss saw a fair amount of play back then. It was in Randy Bueller's Draw Go deck that won Worlds that year. But at the same time, this... You could make an argument because the one mana more, we're in a slower format, so maybe that makes some sense, but I'm not liking Contradict in a format full of dissolves and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm not a huge fan. Not in standard, but uh, in limited, oh yeah. This is fair to play in limited, because you're not, this This is probably the best, next to perhaps Silumgar's Scorn, perhaps. This is probably the best counter spell we see in limited for, yeah. you know, for this block. Yeah, in limited, I do think Salumgar Scorn can get crazy if you build for it. Yeah. Now, the best, well, actually, the best counter spell we've seen in limited in this block is Disdainful Stroke. Yeah. But, you know, um, you'll only be playing with Favor Forged and, and Dragons in the pre release. Yeah. So, eh, of all the counter spells you're going to see, this might be the best. But, no standard. Mm. All right, moving on. Oh, Dance of the Skywise. Yeah, do you want this one? I know uh, you like this card. Yeah, I actually like this. Um, I missed this before I did my Mono Blue Devotion Deck Tech, which would have. Given me a chance to try and rearrange it some. I don't know if I'll my, put this in. For my aggro build. Uh, well, originally I was building around like uh, with Ornithopter and Insult. Oh, you're doing the Scissors thing. Yeah. Yeah. In Mono Blue Devotion. This is like another copy of Scissors. Yeah. Yeah. It's a 4 4 and it'll target any one of my guys. So my Omen Speaker now has more relevance. Um, Much more. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, unfortunately, Frostwalker loses relevance. Yeah, Frostwalker. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, we hated that card in our set review for Favor Forge, and we might have been a little wrong about Frostwalker, just slightly. But I still don't think it saw the play that that it that people thought it might. Yeah. There are a lot of people really hyping Frostwalker, you know. Uh, anyway, back to dance. Uh, another part about this, it's still going to be your two mana uh, ferocious enabler as a, as like different tricks when you have high mana for those ferocious spells. Yeah. Now, in limited, this is great, I think, because it's going to take out uh, a lot of dragons. Yeah. They're not going to see it coming. It's a great combat trick to deal with those four toughness dragons. This is fine for that purpose and that purpose alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coming up next, we've got um, Durger, Durger, Nemesis. This is this is already, this has built-in internet speak. Durger, Nemesis. <laughs> this is a 6 mana 6-5 Defender with Megamorph 7, and it's not great. It's really not great. I don't like it. Moving right along. Yeah. Uh, we get Dragon Lord's Prerogative. At six mana instant speed, draw four cards. The entire internet is split on this card. Um, is it I'm better than Jace's Ingenuity? At one mana more, 
For just the for, one more card, you yeah, know? Yeah, for just the one more card. I mean, you still do, you it's, know. it's the same basic kind of thing there. Like, like, yeah, same basic concept. Yeah, yeah, it's the same basic concept. So I see why people would still be like, no, Jace's Ingenuity, because that's one mana less, you can cast it sooner. However... one um, I think one mana is worth one card all day. Yeah, I think one mana is worth one card. Not only that, but uh, if you do have sort of a dragon type build for your deck which is possible with the upcoming standard yeah, stuff yeah, Jutai you know, and Ice Region or Ice Fairy Region yeah all, all that kind of stuff uh, draw four cards and can't be countered yeah the control mirror this is probably fine yeah this but, this can become a relevant thing I mean like I never I never really countered um, in the control mirror I never really countered opportunity you know you don't really counter Jace uh, Jace's ingenuity you, yeah you know you counter the relevant stuff they play with it but then again in the control mirror a little devil's advocate here whoever gets the most card advantage usually wins mm -hmm. so you do want to counter that maybe these yeah, they draw this has cards. so much uh, draw a card advantage because this is three which is the most we're going to have out of the entire uh, set of standard right now yeah yeah this is the most card advantage you can possibly get off of one card in standard so that's that seems maybe relevant mm -hmm. people say it's a strictly better opportunity which it is um, an opportunity saw standard play yeah so I think final result this probably will see some play mm -hmm. in some things I don't mind Dragon Lord's prerogative but I'm not going to like sit here and pimp it it's okay it probably will see play though oh yeah so moving on, this is um, Elusive Spell Fist. And I wish, it sucks they can't just print the word prowess on him. I mean, he gets he doesn't get the toughness bonus, you know? But yeah. this is a prowess guy. Yeah, so. but he gets unblockable instead. Yep. So he doesn't need the toughness bonus. Well, what we said before we started recording this is if you Titan Strength this guy, that's five unblockable damage mm -hmm. right there. So I wouldn't put this guy past standard play. A lot of people didn't like him. Um, I forget what he was called, like Jeskai Scout or something. He's um, a two-mana one-three with prowess in... in um, Favorite Forged, I think. Yeah, he's in, I think he was in FRF. But in any case, people hated on him for a while. And then people started liking him. Um, and Luis Scott Vargas famously said he might be good for standard play even. And this guy is the exact same guy, except he can't be blocked. And he doesn't get the total toughness bonus. So well, the idea that he can't be blocked mm -hmm. is pretty relevant all day. So I won't completely count this guy out. Nah, he's good in sealed play. Oh, yeah. Very good in sealed play. Oh, yeah. yeah. To fill out the lower end of your curve. Knowing that, he's common. Yep. That's that's relevant too. You'll get a couple of these guys, maybe. So, moving on. What's this card? Uh, in case and ice, uh, nice little uh, flash enchantment here, of course. Yeah. Um, it's uh, more color hate, and it's typical uh, red green targets, which is common from blue. Yeah. I uh, say that based on the example of Tide Binder Mage. Oh, well, you know, it's just the two colors that blue hates. Yeah. That pose blue in the color pie. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and when it enters the battlefield, uh, tap enchanted creature, and it doesn't untap during its control. It untaps tap. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice card. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, I like that it has flash. Yeah, that's the best thing about it. I actually don't rate this above the other color hosing removal cards. Mm. Um, I rate them all about the same. Yeah. But I feel like this is very good because of, just because of the flash, obviously. Um, if, it were, if it didn't have flash, I think it'd still be an acceptable card. But just the flash is... That's so good. That's so good. Play this in, I mean, obviously in your sideboard, but, you know, I, I say I really like this card. Yeah. I think it has less of a chance at seeing sideboard play in standard than some of the others, because some of the others are more bread and butter effects for those colors, you know. Blue will probably play other cards in the board, mm -hmm. but I still think this is more than fine, you know. Yeah. Coming up next, we've got a combat trick for blue. This is Glint. Uh, Glint is more than fine. Your creature almost certainly will survive combat mm -hmm. and any sort of tricks they try to pull, you yep. know? So, what do you feel? It's a good card. Yeah, I like it just fine. Yeah. Like a, a good one of or something. I don't know if I'd play multiple copies of Glint in your sealed pool, but... Um, it depends on your, uh, pool of, uh, like, one toughness guys that you end up having. Yeah, one and two toughness guys, yeah. True. But I mean, just even if it didn't get the O three, the hexproof is just very relevant. You know? Oh yeah, it's that's a counter gonna be, spell. Exactly, that's yeah. going to protect from any um, removal that they end up throwing at you. Here's a card Tony likes. Uh, good a old marker. Yeah, this is Tony's uh, like pet from the set. <laughs> His pet card. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, it's a one mana one one unblockable, and he's got Megamorph for just a blue mana to flip him back up. So, uh, over time, you know, four mana for a two two unblockable. Not the most impressive thing. No. Nah. Don't get me wrong. But... Super fun. Yeah, just nice and fun. 1-1 uh, one, one, uh, for 1 that's unblockable is always nice, especially since it's in blue. Dude, um, also, it almost makes him worth playing the 1-drop in sealed. You know? Yeah. Uh, you can build out of this guy. 
And uh, the artwork for me for this, I since he's uh, listed as a salamander, I actually <laughs> imagine this guy being like the tiniest thing yeah, ever. And uh, the things on the side of the artwork there, I know it's actually it looked like roots like, or something. Yeah, like forestry, forestry or something. I actually kind of think that's like a dragon's paw that he's just <laughs> like in a puddle hiding from. He's him. like, uh, that's cool because the flavor text is cool. Yeah. He's being ignored by the dragon. Yeah. Although in this case, being ignored, you might still get squished. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I like him. I think I think he's he's kind of fun. You know, I, that being said, I don't know how many limited applications he has. He does the, the Fate Forge does have that cycle of three mana auras that mm -hmm. give a creature plus two plus two plus a, and a thing. Yeah. You know, another ability, and that looks nice. Making him a three three with an ability unblockable. You know, it mm -hmm. seems nice. But you're asking to get two for one in that situation. So yeah, this is true. Um, he's no invisible stalker. Mm -hmm. But if we had a way to consistently provide him with hexproof, yeah, then that'd be nice. Yeah, he's your build a boat guy. Yep, you I like building boats. You know, shellac. Yeah. <laughs> Lurker's okay. He's another one that has internet speed built in. Gurr Lurker. <laughs> <laughs> we can move on to another internet speed card. This is Gurmag Drowner. <laughs> all the all the blue cards. <laughs> Gurmag Drowner is um, a four mana two four pillar field ox right there. Exploit, and when he exploits, you uh, you impulse. Actually, you don't impulse because they don't go on the bottom. They go in your graveyard, which I think has some relevance because we'll be playing with Delve cards in this set. Yeah. So it's a Delve enabler, and you get a card off of it. You know, it places itself in your hand. But he's a fine limited common. You see a lot of that, by the way, as we go through blue. Blue has a lot of just fine limited commons. They're yeah. fine, you know. Here's a card that's way more than fine. Tony gets to talk about yet another card that he enjoys. Oh, I love this guy. Uh, you guys also saw this in my Mono Blue Devotion deck tech. If you've watched it, again, link in the description. Uh, Icefall Regent. Five mana, four, three flyer. This guy, uh, I got a quote channel fireball. They called it from uh, Dungeon Geist before is the same effect. When he enters the yeah. battlefield, uh, we get to tap target creature and opponent controls. Put and to this, sleep. Yeah, yeah, and this saw plenty of play. I think you guys did. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, and then on top of that, we get a Titan effect on this. He protects himself so that uh, spells that would target him that are controlled by your opponent cost two colorless more to cast. Yeah, the Frost Titan effect. Yeah, so since that's just like, oh. If you want to lightning strike this guy, it's four mana. If you want to mur uh, Hero's Downfall, it is then five. Five, mana. yeah. Icefall Region is is quite the fine card, though. I think that oh, yeah. all these regions are a little pushed. Mm -hmm. You know, they might see sand, they might not. But of all the regions, this and the red one are my two favorites. And if we're talking about standard, I think that they're the most likely to see play. Yeah, at five mana with those two effects, like being able to <coughs> tap down the biggest guy and protect himself, I have a good feeling about him seeing play. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, some would argue that um, like you just play a Jutai over this. Mm -hmm. But if you want to build like the straight up mono blue control. There are ways to do it, and yeah. this guy's part of that, I think. So. Moving on to Illusory Gains. Uh, we think this card might be a trap. Um, this is a 5-mana control magic, so that sounds good so far, but whenever they play another guy, you attach this to the guy they just played. So any junky top deck that they rip off, and they're like, oh, this is a 2-mana 1-1, one -one. I don't know. So In Sealed, I do like this because Stealing Guys is good. Like Stealing Guys is literally always good no matter what, but... um. I do think that this one is slightly jankier than a lot of the other Steel Guy cards that we see. So in Mono Blue, if you just like kept them from ever sticking another creature, this might be kind of good. Yeah. Maybe. But we can All go ahead. All the essence scatters that we don't have. We don't even have. Yeah. Uh, next up, though, we got to learn from the past. And target player shuffles his or her graveyard into his or her library and draw a card at instant speed. Um... I'm on the fence about this. I like the idea of this, but it's counterintuitive to delve. Yeah, in this format, number, it doesn't yeah. help delve well. Yeah, number one. Uh, which means, well, maybe I use this against my opponent to negate their delve. But then you're giving them back all those spells. Yeah. Best thing about it is kind of the art. But, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. I'm not a huge fan. Yeah. This next card, I am a huge fan of. Though. <laughs> yeah, this next card, Devin has been talking I've, to me about. I've been talking about it. this for a while. I mean, I hope that it doesn't sound too casual, but I think living lore might actually be a thing. I think Living Lore might be a card in this standard. I mean, obviously the first thing you think are what two cards? Uh, Trish Cruz, Dig Through Time. Boom. I mean, obviously, that's yeah. what you do. You like, a, a third card comes to mind, though not as thought of as much, just because it hasn't really seen play. Temporal Trespass. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of mana. 
That's a crazy amount of mana. I mean, there's Dead Drop. I think Dead Drop costs something like nine or ten mana yeah. when you delve it. So like, all of this is all of these are good mm -hmm. for living lore. Um, living lore, man. If you just think about dig through time with this, that that's so crazy. That is so crazy. And you get to cast the dig through time again mm -hmm. later. If that last line of text wasn't on the card, it wouldn't be anywhere near as relevant. But mm -hmm. I want to say that this is one of the wackiest cards in the set, and and consequently one of the hardest calls to make, but I think that you, you, this might see standard play. This this might, just because we have so many good Delve cards in the set, you know? I can see it. I can see it. Being able to cast Dig through time yep. for free. The only problem with it is you have to sacrifice it. Yep. But there are ways to play around that, give oh, him yeah. back, you know? Oh yeah, there's plenty of things you can do. So I love that like when he does it, when he dies, you don't have to exile him or anything. You, know, you can keep recurring this guy. When he enters the battlefield, which means he's a good target for... Reanimation. Oh, whip. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, whip. Yeah, whip. Whip. Um, living lore, though, good. Oh, yeah. I think. I think. Uh, we'll I see th about standard. I, th I think it has great potential. Yeah, potential all day. Mirror Mockery. It's a two mana enchantment. It's got some uses, you know? You this can get, definitely has some uses. Yeah, preventing siege rhinos from attacking again yep. because you'll get their enter the battlefield trigger and be able to block their guy. Um,. Hornet Queens, same Hornet thing. Queen. Um, I want to put this on my own Hornet Queen. Yeah. That too. Or being able to put this on your own Z Drino. Yeah, and you get the you know, three life train every turn, no matter what. Yeah. Hornet Queen is so funny. <laughs> Just get a bunch of tokens every time you swing. <laughs> bunch of 1 1 flying Death Touch tokens. Yeah. Mirror Mockery is fine. I think that it actually has some modern applications too. I think that this could, could totally see modern play. This has so many stupid things with, um, you know. Oh, yeah, because if they swing with Goyf, you get Goyf. You know, Goyf is fine. You get to block. You yeah, know, they're Goyf. This is a pacifism in blue in a lot of ways. So there's at least that much. This is a blue pacifism. This, this, this well, well, well. goes on their Snapcaster. This goes on. Well, this goes on your Snapcaster too. Yeah. <laughs> so see a lot of cool stuff with this all oh, yeah. day. So yeah, I like Mirror Mockery. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's a solid two mana blue card. Yeah, all absolutely. the way around. Like. Like, if this does nothing more for you in Sealed than Pacifism, it's already done its job. Yeah. So, definitely. Next up, we got Monastery Lore Master. I don't know how much either one of us really likes this card. Generates value, yeah. but for an insane cost. And only has the two toughness at four mana. Just, I'm not really... Nah. Nah. Screw it. Nah. Let's move on. Uh, moving on, we get Mystic Meditation. Four mana, draw three cards, and then discard two cards unless you discard a creature card. At Sorcery Speed. speed. Why yeah. is this Sorcery Speed? Ugh. Nah. It's one mana too much. It's Sorcery Speed. No. This does technically generate advantage. Yeah. But you're probably going to have to get rid of a thing that you don't want to get rid of, first of all. We saw Thirst for Knowledge a long time ago, but that was one mana less, and Instant Speed, and you had to pitch something that wasn't as relevant. This is just a strictly worse card in literally every way that it could be worse. Yeah. And I, I do not like it at all. Mm -hmm. I think the coolest thing about it is the name, and it kind of makes me mad that a name like Mystic Meditation, which is ostensibly a cool name, mm -hmm. is now used up on this card. That's the most I can say. <laughs> Coming up next, we get a card we all know and love, and the best art ever on Negate. Always. Yep, you'll play it. Yeah. Probably. I mean, it won't be in your main or anything, but a lot of people board this in, and this is, this is a relevant card. Yeah. Negate is relevant. Can't wait to have that in foil, because you know that in foil, that that, that count that spell she's casting is like... Psh. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> it's going to be really pretty in foil. Go ahead. Ojutai Interceptor, 3-1 flying for 4. Yeah. Every time I see Interceptor, I imagine, like, I don't know, I think of football. There's yeah. like a guy diving in front of him. And <laughs> <laughs> so, this, this guy, maybe... Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> bolster target. Hella bolster target. Oh, yeah. Uh, on top of that, uh, his Megamorph is kind of pushed for a common, actually, because it's yeah. the same as his hard cost. Exactly. And since you can morph him, uh, when you cast him as a morph, he's three colorless. Yeah. So he plays a, he plays himself on curve. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. That you got, exactly, exactly. You play him three on the third, you play him on the third turn, you Megamorph him up on the fourth turn. Mm -hmm. And now, again, I talked about this earlier, he has four power, which is... Very relevant because he can take out four toughness dragons. Yes. Yeah. Um, that is that is quite important. I like Interceptor a lot, actually. I do hate the one and two toughness, you know. Yeah. But at the very least, what you want this to do is trade up with and one of will. their dragons, and it, that's what it's meant to do. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, this card's good. In a sealed meta, this card's quite good. Mm -hmm. So we can move on. There we go. To a Jutai's Breath. I think both of us like this card. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to imagine that his breath is really bad. <laughs> and those people are like, Ugh! <laughs> uh, uh, I like the fact that it's Ojutai in the background there. Just yeah. like Just laying it down, too. Yeah. Everywhere. Just laying down the law. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, you can freeze to death if that's how you feel. Fine. Humans. Uh, these these sleep these freeze effects are always good and sealed. Yeah, so this is no different. Hell, it's th again. This is instant speed. Instant speed rebounds. combat trick, and it rebounds. Yeah. So I I really like this. I think this is one of the better removal pieces in blue. Mm -hmm. um, I like this card a lot, a lot. So yeah, and just again, if you're newer, how you play this card is they announce their attack step, and that's when you play the card. Yes. <laughs> And then it's tapped down for that attack step and their next attack step and during your next turn. And yeah, this, the, this card is good. Oh, yeah. These cards are always good. Moving on. Moving on, we get Ojutai Summons. And meh. Meh, yeah. I mean, it's. What it really says is uh, four power, four toughness, flying for five mana. Yeah. Spread but, amongst two creatures is yeah. usually good, too. The problem is that it's sorcery speed. Mm -hmm. So the way this card plays is you play it. You get a 2-2 guy, then you say go. They take their entire next turn. Then you untap, and you get another 2-2. Two -two. So I wish that it just immediately made two 2-2s. Two That'd be yeah. fine. But waiting that extra turn, I don't, need, I don't know how much I like it. The only other thing I'll say about it is that it blocks two other dragons. Yeah. Or it blocks a dragon twice. Yeah. It can block a dragon twice while you fish for stuff. But I don't know. I'm not a giant fan of it. Mm -hmm. At all. Next up, something I would rather be blocking a dragon with. Yeah, all day. I like this card. <laughs> this is Palace Familiar. Yeah, pretty pretty bread and butter, honestly. These yeah. cards that draw you a card, blue blue almost always has one of these in limited. These creatures that draw you a card when they die, replace themselves, we mm -hmm. call it, are always good. And this one chump blocks literally everything in the format. Yeah. So, good card. I'd play this. Oh, yeah. All yeah. day. Play it. Play it. Next up. Uh, next up, we got Profaner of the Dead, and we were talking about this earlier. He's... They... Yeah. 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 He seems like he could be a really cool bomb in Limited. Yeah, um... If you do it right. If you do it right. If yeah. you get lucky and you get uh, this guy and Crater Elemental, <laughs> then you have a trick. Yeah, that's a cool trick. Because you'll just, you'll, that's all their guys. Yeah. That's all their guys, you know. Except for the seven mana guys, which they probably will not have played by them. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I like Profaner a little bit in Sealed. I hate that you have to kill one of your own guys and all you're doing is bouncing guys. That's a, that's a, that's a problem. But honestly, you know, I, I feel like, first of all, it's a hill giant. Yeah. So that's an argument for it. Second of all, you can um, bounce, you know, three guys. Uh, sometimes three, four guys. Oh, oh yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah, that's really good. Potentially bounce. And uh, third of all, I think most importantly, he's carrying a guy's head around. <laughs> so that's, yeah. <laughs> Just start calling him uh, Fatality. <laughs> yeah, Fatality. There yeah. we go. Um, but we could probably move on from Profaner. <laughs> that's a cool name, too. Profaner. By the way, that sounds really dirty. Profaner of the dead. Yeah. Like, in what way are you profaning? The dead. That's well. He's taking their heads. He's, he's at least taking their heads and showing them to people. Like, eh? <laughs> oh, oh! I know who he is. This is the guy that goes around and collects heads for those guys that make shrunken heads. Oh, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> maybe this is the bring out your dead guy to bring yeah. out your dead. <laughs> and so he's so desensitized to it. He's like, hey, this guy's head came off. <laughs> 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 Moving on. <laughs> We've got Carsey Deceiver. <sighs> Carsey Deceiver. If if the blue green or teamer morph deck is a thing, mm -hmm. then this may slot into it. I think the thing that I'm pissed off the most about it is that it doesn't actually accelerate your ability to play morphs yeah. to play face down cards. So that I'm, I'm bummed about that. Yeah. Uh, but nice nice Nicki Minaj on it, big ass can block <laughs> for days, you know. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it's got it's fine limited potential as a two mana zero four, but nah. 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 I want it to do things, but I don't think that deck will be even good enough to matter. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a piece of blue pseudo-removal that I really like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is... Uh, reducing stature. Stature. But yeah. It's, um... It reminds us all of Turn to Frog. Uh, I think Turn to Frog was... Might be more 
my magic career. Oh, wow. I think Turn to Frog, if I'm not mistaken, is either for two mana and instant speed, which this is an enchantment, so that's mm -hmm. cool. But this was instant speed, so it's a really good trick, really good trick. And this mm -hmm. kind of takes away your ability to do that. Yeah. They either become a 1-1 one, one frog or a 0-2 frog. I, I forget, but I think it might be zero two frog, but it's instant speed and it's a till end of turn effect. Yeah. Now this, you just slap it on the hugest dragon guy, and he's irrelevant for the rest of the entire game. Yeah. I have gotten in arguments with people as to whether or not turn to frog is good. I actually don't like turn to frog in limited. I do, but people, this was a, is it good in constructed mm -hmm. environment? No, it's not. No. This also is not good in constructed environments, no. but it is very good in limited. So mm -hmm. play it. Up next is a card I'm going to pass to Tony. Because he really, really um, liked This is probably Tony's favorite blue card, maybe? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Listen to Anticipate. Yeah. Oh. The top two, this is going to be my top, actual, my number one actual blue card for this set. Uh, Shore Crusher Elemental. Uh, three mana, three, three. Boom. Already nice. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, very mana intensive at three blue, but that's what Blue Devotion needed. So, Blue Devotion becomes a very potential thing because Yeah, of it this. could be back. Yeah, I've been trying to brew with it. I have one uh, deck tech up already for it that's yep. like mid-range control. And I'm also going to have an aggro list up hopefully before the end of the week. I want to see that aggro list. I bet it's going to be pretty good, honestly. Uh, I, I, mean, I bet I'm going to like it more than the control list. Uh, it's Yeah, it's mostly one drops. Yeah. Uh, just Yeah, relevant two drops in blue. There's some things. Oh, yeah, but there's like 12 one drops that are relevant. Yeah. I'd still play, um, what is it, Master of Waves. Oh, yeah. You know? This this really does make Master of Waves. Like, Master of Waves is back because of this guy. Yeah, it makes yeah. it that much better because Master of Waves <coughs> make, you, make this guy 4-4, four, four, which means yep. you have an extra power and toughness that you can pump around with. Yep. Um, uh, on top of that, uh, you, it makes you not have to rely on the Megamorph. Yeah, and as it gives, much. And it gives them a different <coughs> extra target to take out, like... When this guy does become Megamorphed, if you've got Master of Waves on the field, yep. when you go to protect him. I mean, the, logically, the idea is you play a one drop, two drop, this guy, and then Master, and you got a bunch of tokens on your hands. So, yeah, yeah. Just, just for Master of Waves, I think this guy is relevant. Not to mention that he protects himself mm -hmm. very well. Um, he's no Aetherling, because, you know, he, he doesn't... He protects himself, and he pumps, you know, but he has no evasion of any kind, which is a huge issue with this, this card. This is true, which is why um, the deck that would want, that would mostly want him as, uh, in, as Blue Devotion, they also run Thassa. Thassa can make him unblockable. Exactly. Yep. yep. Uh, the biggest problem you have with him, though, is that when you uh, go to protect him, since he comes back face down, automatically, every time, guaranteed, Yep. he's vulnerable to him. Yep. And it's a so, problem, because... You know, only having to put up one blue mana, we're used to that. Morphling, Aetherling, whatever. Yeah. But uh, but ostensibly, having to put up six mana, mm -hmm. two of which is blue, is asking a lot. That is asking a lot. But, you know, mo nine times out of ten, you're just going to leave up the one blue. Mm -hmm. And at that point, if they remove him, you flip him down, and then they remove him again. You've, you've just two for one. Yeah. So that is that is also fine. Yeah. You know? I like Short Crasher. I love Short Crasher. <laughs> That's the difference. I like him. I think he might be a thing. Tony's like, Short Crasher's the best blue card. <laughs> so, and he may be right. I don't think we've seen a blue card this pushed, a blue creature this pushed, pushed. since Aetherling. You know? I mean, even Aetherling we had to wait until rotation on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a thing until until rotation. Innistrad rotated out and suddenly Aetherling's here. Yeah. You know? Um, we had to wait a whole six months for that card to be a thing. We may for, for Short Crasher. But yeah. we'll see. This is weird. Up next is Sidisi's Faithful, which is either really good or really bad, honestly. Um, a 1 mana 0 4 seems fine. The exploit, here's my issue with the exploit, okay? You have to sacrifice a guy to simply bounce a guy. So you lose a guy forever, they get to play their guy again. That's my, that's my, that's my number one problem. Yeah. You know, but for all intents and purposes, this could be fine. This could be. It still bounce a creature and bounce is fine. Yeah. Especially with all the plus one, plus one counters we see running around in this set. So, there's that at least. Green produces plus one, plus one counters like easy. Easy, easy. Lemon peasy. And this, this card deals with that to an extent, you know. So there's that. But honestly, I can't get over the fact that you, you sacrifice a guy forever. You yeah. never see him again. And they get to play their guy. And probably look at you like, I get my guy back. Yeah. Yeah. Shitty grin. <laughs> Next up is a card for all the Thundercats fans. Sight beyond sight. Sword of Omens! <laughs> Give me sight beyond sight. Aside uh, from that, the card's not very good, though. Mm -mm. <laughs> if this was instant speed, I would be all on it. But I know. It, 
Sorcery speed, no, too sorcery slow. Sorcery speed, you're instantly bad. And moving on to something yeah. that has sorcerer in it that we like. Yeah, this this I think might see standard play. Mm-hmm. This is a uh, Silumgar Sorcerer. This is a uh, you know three mana two one. It does all the things though. Flash flying. So three. I actually I think three mana two one flash flying is fine mm-hmm. on its own, especially in sealed, mm-hmm. um, because at the very least this can um, be a surprise chump blocker. That is the yeah. literal very least. That is the bottom rung. Of what this card does. Everything else is, is even better though. So, is it worth exploiting a creature to uh, Essence Scatter? I think so. I think so. Depending it, on the situation, well, yes. This may be the return of, um, and I don't, I don't know if I want to call this for modern or especially Legacy, but in Legacy we have seen the return of the fish deck, the blue or blue-white a, a lot of times. Um, mm-hmm. Tempo deck. That's mm-hmm. an aggro deck um, that just disrupts and then gets in ping damage until it wins the game during combat. Um, and this goes very well in maybe a standard version of Fish, because mm-hmm. um, it does all the things Fish cards like to do. It has evasion, it has an added ability, it, um, it, it has flash, that's pretty good. Yeah. So uh, this card just has so many different things that it does that I can't help but like it. I do like this card. Mm. Anything to add on Sorcerer? Because I know you like the card too. Um, yeah, uh, I like the card, I think it's fine. Uh, I love the flavor for this. Uh, there's some uh, conspiracy about like. Yeah, we don't know if dragon. the Silumgar people are working for or against Silumgar, you know? Uh, my bet right now is that most of these guys are actually working against Silumgar, that they're in conspiracy to try and take down the dragons. Yep. Viva la resistance! La resistance! So I die. La resistance lives on. And he will die. Um. <laughs> The guy he exploits will die. Yeah. Yeah, like you should sing the South Park Resistance song as you exploit the guy. Um, <laughs> uh, if I get to play an approved release with this, I will memorize that just so I can do this. So I die. It's, uh, you know, this is fine. This And uh, the reasoning is, too, that like Silumgar Assassin can kill Silumgar. This can counter Silumgar. Yeah. So maybe they're working against Silumgar. We'll see. And this next guy... Um, this next guy, you could make that argument too, because it looks like he's like sucking up the fire breathing from a dragon. This is Silumgar Spell Eater, and um, one there have been arguments that this might be a card in standard. I don't think so at all. This is strictly limited play, mm-hmm. but in limited play, it is very good because it's okay. going to counter a bunch of high cost dragons that we see at the top of the curve in this set. You it's man leak on a two three stick yep. for five mana. Very good. Yeah, I mean eight mana investment over time. Yep, but, that's the issue. Yeah, so that's kind of bad, but. We already saw one five mana counter spell that we said we would Was definitely pretty good. Yeah. Be, playable be playing in uh, limited. So, right. and with this as an uncommon, having an extra uh, counter spell option like that, and you get a creature out of it, I, f- just fine. Being able to counter a spell, either counter spell or kill a creature, obviously, mm-hmm. are my two favorite things to do when flipping a card up. Everything else, I'm not really a huge fan. Like, I don't care about plus one, plus one counters and all this stuff. But yeah. being able to either counter a spell or kill a creature easily is my two favorite things to do when flipping a card up. So I think this has a lot of re- relevance in sealed place specifically. I don't think anywhere yeah. else, but you're going to, you know, you're going to flip this down third turn. A couple turns later, they're going to go to play their bomb rare dragon, mm-hmm. and you're going to counter it. So play this card is our advice. Yeah. Moving Here's another along. card Tony's played with a lot. Uh, yep, this was another one from the uh, Mono Blue Devotion deck, which may seem strange. Salumgar Scorn. Uh, normally, you don't see too much counter magic in a Blue Devotion deck. Yeah, uh, we it's had more you know mid range oriented. Yeah, we had an attached ability on uh, Judges Familiar in the original one, but oh yeah, Judges Familiar was so good. Yeah, yeah good but in this format, we don't really have anything like that besides Mind Reaver, which don't get me wrong, is great for two Blue Devotion, but you also have to have heroic spells to target oh, it. Oh, yeah. To make it worth anything. Yeah. yeah. Might um, just play him, though, because he's a two-blue mana creature. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean it's, it's, it's that level right now. Yeah. But. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, two-blue mana, uh, counter-target spell for uh, one extra mana, that's that's not great. Um, so, this is somewhat relevant, I think. What, I, what I'm trying to get at is that the counter-spell, unless they pay one, is good. Because especially in standard, everyone plays on curve anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, up to the fifth turn, this counters things the same way that a, a hard counter would. Exactly, so, which is why I had it in the Blue Devotion. It's mm-hmm. going to be a hard... In there, it ended up being a hard counter most of the time. Two play testing. Uh, I would usually have an Ice Fall region in hand or one on the board and boom. Man, two, two blue mana to just hard counter a spell is a hell of a card. They should probably print that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it would break standard. 
I mean, we've never seen that before. <laughs> um, <laughs> moving on. Let's talk about Skywise teachings um, for probably just a second here. Um, I think that this is a very good card if it didn't cost four mana. Yeah, I wish it cost three. Yep. Three would be much better, especially in sealed. But if you're building the sealed prowess thing, this will get you a bunch of a bunch of value. Oh, this yeah. is this is likely a bomb if you're building the prowess deck in sealed. So go for it. Yeah. <laughs> probably this is probably good even at the four mana. I wish the tokens it made had prowess though. Yeah, no, that'd be way better. Like instead of instead of flying, give them prowess. Oh no, I want the flying. I want to block dragons. <laughs> I want to block dragons all day. Okay, so he wants flying and prowess. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and of course, it would teach them flying. Cause like, look at that art. It's hilarious. Actually, it's so Jutai, like, this is how you dragon. <laughs> to a bunch of people. It's funny too, cause they're down there doing like. Ah! So is that is that where uh, Sark and the Dragon Speaker went? Is that how he learned how to become Maybe a dragon? Maybe he like got taught by a Jutai. Like, this is how you dragon, and now he can become an indestructible dragon. <laughs> he really took to the coursework. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Coming up, this is a card that I really like. Um, this is Stratus Dancer. When he was first spoiled, he's a very early spoil. Mm -hmm. But when he was first spoiled, I was super excited about him. And he's got a pair of Psy, like yeah. Raphael, so that's cool. He kind of looks like Vega from Street Fighter. Yeah. I tested this out in my original Aggro Devotion thing. Mm -hmm. um, and he was great as just a uh, two mana, two one flyer. Yeah, totally. I mean, it counters other counter spells in the control matchup. It, uh, it counters removal, which is obviously that's what you're going to do with it if mm -hmm. you flip it up nine times out of ten. Yeah. Um, this also, this is important, in. Um, this counters mass removal spells. This counters Crux of Fate. Mm -hmm. This counters in hostilities. Yep. So, you know, if you are playing blue aggro, there's this that's one of the only decks that just can like, you know, not even care. Yeah. Not even care about in hostilities, you know? So and you got plenty of time because they gotta get to five. Yeah. You know, and you morph this third turn and you just leave it leave it hanging, you know. We can move on, I think. Stratus Dancer is good though. Oh, I, yeah. I really I, he's one of my favorite cards. She's one of my favorite cards. Maybe in a set. I don't know about the top ten or anything, but she's she's way up there. Mm. So this is Tygum's Strike, which I think is a fine limited card for what it's worth. Oh yeah. You know. When everything is like four, five, six power, mm -hmm. you know, giving something unblockable is good. Yeah. And and flying isn't as big of a thing as it usually is in this set because so many things fly. Yeah. So straight up unblockability is, is the most is the most pure form of evasion and exactly. is very good. Coming up we got a uh, updraft elemental. Three mana, one four flyer is just fine. And that's, limited. that's yeah. I think that's more than fine and limited. Yeah, uh, I play one copy of this maybe. You know, it's common. You'll you may get one. So it's not a wall. You can swing if you wanted to. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, that's a very important note. So I like him. I like him for what it's worth. Sometimes you see the one three flyers in limited, and those are always desirable. Mm -hmm. So this is good. Yeah. Coming up next, we've got Void Squall. Void Squall is sorcery speed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sorry guys, um, I think that this is again probably more than fine in sealed. More than fine in sealed. Yeah, but it, in sealed, it's essentially um, a time walk. Actually, it's kind of a two for one kind of card. You know, you, oh, you played that big guy for all your mana. You can't attack with him. I'm gonna on my turn. I'm gonna bounce him. So if you want him, you gotta play him again. My my, my funny thing with this card, the thing that makes me kind of like it, mm -hmm. is that okay. So on your turn, you bounce their guy. All right, passes around to their turn. The guy's in their hand, but they know full well that if they play the guy again, you're going to bounce it again. Yeah. Okay? So, like, there's a weird thing there. Like, do I play the guy again? He's just going to get bounced. But if I don't play the guy, he's going to bounce another guy. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of a pain in the ass for your opponent to play against this in sealed. Mm -hmm. But in standard, it's just not instant speed. So, <laughs> nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Coming up, a uh, useful oh, like scholar. Uh, this is something that's uh, very good in limited uh very 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 good limited yeah because it actually generates card advantage yeah not only does he replace himself he generates card mm -hmm. advantage you you rarely see that on these creatures we've seen kingfisher and a couple of other things when they die draw a card mm -hmm. jeskai sage um but this is so good i think most yeah. people might might be like four men is a little much but put it this way kingfisher all right is a two two flyer for four when he dies draw a card this loses the flying you get an extra card that's totally that's fine that's yeah. great actually and not only that, but the kid, the art, the guy looks like a total prick, which I love. <laughs> you know, you're gonna want to block with him just to kill him. Yeah, because he's laying back on the bed, like, no, nah, I'm just waiting. I'm just studying this scroll in this studying. luxurious mm. bedroom here. But you know, one day he's gonna be called to. That's that's the tragedy of youthful scholar. One day he will be called to military action. He'll leave school, 
And then apparently we will absorb his knowledge when he dies. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. Moving on to our final card in the set, actually. This is, um, or in the in blue. Yeah. This is a Zephyr Scribe. And I think he's actually kind of interesting. A 3 mana 2 1, and you can loot with him, even though it freaking costs mana to loot. I hate that. But you can loot with him, and when you prowess, you untap him. And that's nothing to scoff at. That's quite good, you know. He reminds me of Gelectrode, sort of the thing that taps for a mana to ping. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you tap it to ping, and then when you play a non creature spell, it untaps. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that, you know, you just go go around looting all over the place. Yeah. That's why I hate that he only he costs blue. You should just be able to tap him. That wouldn't be broken or anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you just it's just two loots in one turn instead of one. Like, I don't, who cares? That's fine. Um, but at a 2 1, I don't like his PT for three mana, you know? But he's not going to be attacking or blocking. Mm -hmm. You know? He's going to be. He's going to be one of your big draw sources, especially since yeah. he's common. He's, yeah, exactly. I'd probably play this guy in sealed at common. Blue gets a lot of good stuff, reliable cards in the common slot this time around. Yeah. Um, which often blue blue does very well in uncommons, which it yeah. does have some some very fine uncommons. But oh, yeah. we see some good support in blue at the common slot in this oh. set, you know. Which is which is more than fine. I'm not actually super impressed with blue in mm -hmm. limited. You know, I think that. Blue has some some fair standard players. I think that uh, in limited, blue is a great second color. Right, you know, exactly. Because there's so much splash ability on all the cards. Bet between all the cards you want to play in that limited environment and whatnot, yeah, um, yeah. they it's a great. Second support, color. Support, you know. Su support. That's the word I'm looking for. You know, you, you have to have a main color, but I feel like this the blue could. Blue usually does very well in limited environments because mm -hmm. it has flyers. But again, that's not so relevant this time around because every color gets flyers. So we see that blue may not necessarily be the odd man out, but may not experience the same amount of success that it, it usually does yeah. in, in limited environments. So, Well, I think that that was our impression of blue for Dragons of Tarkir right there. You know, it's definitely probably not as good as it usually is in limited environments, but still a, a fine support color. To, oh, yeah. to back up, you know, other colors. And it, it definitely has great effects in it. You know, like, you, I'm still looking at Youthful Scholars. That's a very good card. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of those that are just kind of very good cards, but not the best card ever. Mm. And that makes for a good limited, you know, environment usually. Tomorrow we'll do White, which I think might be one of the best colors in the whole set. For standard and limited. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, let me say that right now. I think white is a very strong color, but you'll see what we're talking about tomorrow, guys. Until then, my name's Devin. This is my good buddy. Tony. As usual, he's a nice guy. And we'll see you guys next time, man. Remember to like, share, comment in the thing where there's a thing for you to leave the comment things. And, uh, yeah, we, we asked you a couple of questions this time around. Make sure to get back to us on those because we are very interested mm -hmm. in what you guys think about some of these cards. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. In any case, I'm Devin. He's Tony. We'll see you guys for White next time. Thanks for watching, Wizard.